DEP Secretary Sean Hamilton. We have the Vice Chairman for South Florida Water Management District, Scott Wagner. Cheryl Meads is also on our South Florida Water Management District Governing Board. Uh, Eric Eichenberg, Everglades Foundation CEO. Kelly Ralston from the Conservation and Public Policy for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Noah Valenstein, former DEP Secretary, now Chairman of the Biscayne Bay Commission. Uh, Adam Blaylock, DEP Sec uh, Deputy Secretary for Ecosystem Restoration and Member, Biscayne Bay Commission. Of course, uh, Senator Ileana Garcia. Uh, Senator, I guess Anna Maria is not here, um, but we do have our new uh, Senator, um, Senator Alexis Kalatayu. So thank you and <laughs> congratulations. We've also got uh, Representative uh, Alex Rizzo. Is this your, was your second term now or third? Sure. Second. second, okay. And um, uh, Basabi, the uh, Republican Miami Beach is now the representative right here. <laughs> Not a lot of people were predicting that, although I knew he was gonna win on election day. Uh, because we follow these things and we kind of know kind of what we're doing, but we've been uh, really, really uh, excited to see some great new people coming into the legislature now uh, after this most recent election and particularly down here in South Florida. I mean, you had some really, really great election victories and so I know they're gonna be able to do a lot and be able to produce a lot. And um, you know, if you do good work, the people respond. Uh, um, uh, Ileana, what was your, um, you won by how many votes your first time? And then how many points percentage you just win by? Over 20. 20. So, you know, you go. <laughs> that was the same with us. You know, we went for, you know, we did 33,000 and 18, did 1.5 million margin this time. I mean, it's just, you do, you do it how you do it. So we're glad to be here at Biscayne Bay. This is a very important uh, resource for the state of Florida. It's the largest estuary in our state. Uh, of course, it has a direct connection to Florida's coral reef. Uh, and as many of you know here, down in South Florida, it's an important economic driver for the region. We have the largest passenger port in the world. Uh, of course, it's an international sailing uh, destination. Uh, it's also been boats, you know, as we got all this migration, people come down by boats they didn't necessarily know how to do. So you see a little bit of that. Uh, but bottom line is people want to be here. They understand how nice it is. Um, and But we've also seen over the years that it has a lot of unique challenges. And there have been a lot of efforts to recognize this and to, to help uh, ameliorate uh, problems as, as best that we could. And so this is something that when I became governor, we said we wanted to take head on. We wanted to make sure that we were doing uh, all that we could uh, to make sure that we were being good stewards of Biscayne Bay and doing what we need to do uh, to improve uh, the overall ecosystem here. Uh, part of that was in 2020, we did a joint um, deal with the county and we each did 10 million, so we pumped 20 million into Biscayne Bay efforts. And then in 2021, I signed House Bill 1177. So this was something that Senator Garcia had sponsored. And what it did was it established the Biscayne Bay Commission uh, to bring federal, state, and regional partners together to focus on the health of Biscayne Bay. So this commission's re met regularly over the last year uh, to evaluate programs, identify priorities, and ensure uh, uh, adequate funding for the priorities. And so uh, we've been able to do a lot already with Biscayne Bay, and then today here we're able to say we're gonna do even more. So I'm uh, building on our progress that we've made in Biscayne Bay today by announcing an additional seven awards totaling $22.7 million through the Biscayne Bay Grant Program to support water quality and other protection projects. <laughs> so since I've been governor, we've now done over $52 million once this award uh, is, is disseminated uh, for 
the health of Biscayne Bay. So the projects today, um, you know, there's money that's going to go to the village of Key Biscayne, Coral Gables, Miami Springs, North Miami, Miami-Dade County, uh, uh, Cutler Bay. And you're looking at things like septic to sewer conversions. You're looking at stormwater management. You're looking at additional wetland restoration. And so these awards are going to help the areas located around Biscayne Bay reduce the impacts. Uh, it's a very big, populous uh, part of the state. And so there's just naturally things that, that you have to deal with. And, of course, it seems to be a place that more and more people want to come to. So being able to do some of the things we're doing with this is going to have a lot of uh, effects downstream, and it's going to make the bay better. So we did over $30 million already uh, since I've taken office to improve Biscayne Bay and water quality. Some of that is infrastructure like septic to sewer to reduce nutrient pollution and water, uh, uh, improve water quality, also increasing f freshwater inflows to protect marine habitats in the bay. We've used more innovative technology to improve stormwater management and help prevent sanitary sewer overflows, and I know we've seen that in the past. Uh, we've also done uh, funding to protect coral reefs. And so we're, uh, we're happy that we've been able to get a lot of momentum. We're happy that we've been able to make a difference. Um, we're going to continue to do that. Of course, this is part of larger efforts that we've done uh, over my four years uh, with Everglades restoration. We did $3.3 billion in my first four years. That was over doubling what was done in the previous four before I became governor. You now have more water flowing from Lake Okeechobee south through the Everglades and into Florida Bay than you've had in the modern Florida history, and we're doing more uh, all the time. Uh, we also created the Resilient Florida Program, and that was over $1.1 billion so far for projects to fortify our infrastructure and help communities better prepare uh, for the impacts that Mother Nature may throw our way. I mean, you saw Hurricane Ian in southwest Florida, and the thing that, that, that you noticed was you had had Charlie in 2004, you had had Irma in 2017. Uh, some of the areas that went through that and had uh, more resilient infrastructure, they fared much better. In fact, you look at a lot of the homes, and people down here know, because after, after Andrew, you saw how the building codes changed. You know, some of those, those homes that were built since that time you know, did pretty well. I mean, you know, maybe you'll have some roof shingles or something, but you didn't see the catastrophic uh, results uh, with that more fortified infrastructure, whether it's somebody's private home, whether it's some of the underlying infrastructure in terms of, of what goes on uh, w w with the overall uh, county or city. So, so this stuff does work, and it lets the communities get back on their feet. I mean, there's a lot of damage that was done, of course. I mean, you go, you have 155-mile-an-hour winds coming ashore. You had major storm surge. Some of those buildings were, were, were very old, and they just were not up to specification to be able to handle that. And so, you, of course, you saw a lot of damage, but you also saw a lot of resilience. Even the, like these mobile homes and these manufactured homes, some of the newer ones that are built knowing that you could have a hurricane, there were actually some of those parks where the damage, I mean, I thought it would have been wiped off the whole uh, planet, and yet the damage was, was relatively modest, and some of the places didn't get damaged um, at all. So, so this stuff matters. Um, it also just matters that in Florida, we take a lot of this stuff seriously. If you think about with, with Ian, you know, we didn't know exactly where it was going to end up going. It was a, kind of a moving target. Uh, but you had 42,000 linemen and crewmen that were stationed, pre-stationed in the state of Florida to be able to respond to get the power back on. So you had millions of people that lost power, and you had the quickest restoration of any major hurricane because of the preparation. So you had that, uh, and you had our FDOT, you know, clearing the roads, making sure everyone could get back in. We had the urban search and rescue. You know, they were coming across Alligator Alley from South Florida to be able to go. It was still like tropical storm winds, effectively, and they were in there in the wee hours of the morning on that Wednesday into Thursday morning uh, going in, and they did thousands of rescue missions, you know, to be able to help people. And as you saw... That was important because you had two islands, Pine Island and Sanibel, 
the, the uh, bridges got knocked out. So you wake up the next morning after that, the causeway going to Sanibel, Long Causeway, it was severed in three places. Pine Island was like, it like almost totally washed away. You looked at that, you're like, oh my gosh. And so the people were being told, hey, this is gonna take six months to a year. You better get off these islands. There's just not gonna be able to be help. Uh, and even though these were not state roads or bridges, you know, they reached out to us and we said, yeah, we'll help. So we went in there, uh, we did the one bridge, uh, took cognizance of it, uh, produced a br temporary bridge in three days going into Pine Island. And then on Sanibel, uh, it was a total work of two weeks, but in, in, which was the third week uh, after the storm, they were able to repair all three different locations. And so, you know, I'm coming down here flying over that looking, seeing they would have still been severed from that you know, had we not done done what we did. And so that is just a way where, you know, you got to have all hands on deck on some of these things, and we we're happy to be able to do that. And the result is because of that, because of the quick power, but because of some of the resiliency, you know, for a storm of that magnitude, you know, you're going to see the quickest uh, bounce back, I think, uh, th that we've seen of a Category 4 plus storm. And so it's, it, it, it makes a difference, it really matters, and, and we're happy to be able to continue leading the way on all these issues going forward. Okay, we have Sean Hamilton is our Secretary for uh, DEP, and um, then we'll hear from Senator Garcia. Thank you, Governor. Um, honor, honored to be here today again to celebrate the progress we continue to make um, for Biscayne Bay. Um, under your leadership and the investments that we're making to protect not just, you know, the bay for today, but thinking about the future, right? Setting a firm foundation so that restoration can catch hold and be firmly planted into the future. So it's been a year, as the governor noted, since the Biscayne Bay Commission convened. And so along with our partners, they've been hard at work. Um, they've developed a suite of efforts that will complement the projects that we're talking about to get today. But more importantly, it's about working collaboratively with partnerships to achieve a healthy future for our base. So I want to acknowledge all the hard work of the local folks here in the county, the cities, and the municipalities and their efforts to work together to do just that. So our federal, state, and local stakeholders came together and compiled a list of over 165 ongoing projects outside of this. And again, that's important, right? Those are projects that are happening now as we speak. And that's that foundation that I speak of that will set the future, set the stage for a healthy bay in the future. Miami-Dade County continues to work aggressively on a remedial action plan, um, a remedial assurance plan. The, the, fo the focus of that plan, if you think about it, that is a collaborative, self-administrative process by which the stakeholders here are working collaboratively to come up with a foundation by which they can invest in projects, they can identify solutions, and they themselves, along with our support, can set the path again for the recovery of the bay. I also want to acknowledge the work of the South Florida Water Management District. Um, they are working feverishly hard to finish the Biscayne Bay Coastal Wetlands Project. Again, that is an important project when you think about restoring fresh water flows to Biscayne Bay, but also thinking about improving salinity of those near shore areas. And so again, another great project that is being brought to bear by our Water Management District. Again, all made possible by the Governor's leadership and setting the environment as his priority day one coming into office. Um, some of the projects, like the governor mentioned today, they're going to do. They're going to convert per portions of Miami um, septic systems. Again, as we know, that is a long-standing legacy problem. It is a large problem, but again, these investments will start to turn the needle on that, and we'll start to see those benefits as we reduce nutrients going into the bay. So. Um, as the governor Biscayne noted, Biscayne Bay is a treasured resource, not just here in Miami-Dade, but as a state as a whole. It is a foundation that shows how important it is to make sure that we maintain that equilibrium between our built-out infrastructure and our environment that underpins our economy and our healthy ways of life. So we've got, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but this is the foundation that it's going to take us to move that forward. And that would not be possible without the governor's leadership and, again, making the environment in this, a priority. I look forward to working with the county, our elected officials, our other partners from the Biscayne Bay Commission, again, as we collaborate on projects like this as we look to the future for Biscayne Bay. So again, Governor, thank you for your leadership. And I would like to second everything that uh, Secretary Hamilton has said. Thank you, Governor, so much for your full support. On, um, on what was my commitment originally coming in as senator for then senator for District 37 and now for District 36. 
Um, our motivation is obviously driven by a genuine treasure, which is Biscayne Bay. Uh, we all love where we live, therefore we make this a priority. I'd like to give a very special thanks also to the local volunteer groups that go out on the weekends and make sure that we clean up what a lot of people um, in a very disconsiderate manner leave behind, uh, which is a lot of the pollution that we see on the Spoil Islands. Um, that is another one of the efforts that we have ongoing. And I'd like to thank Secretary Hamilton as well because it has been an, um, something that we have put on the radar, something that we are closely working with along with um, the Chief uh, Bay Officer for the County, uh, Irela Vague. Thank you so much, Irela. You've been so wonderful you know, in, in, in continuing the work and, and the efforts. But once again, um, singling out these volunteer groups, Clean Up Coastal Corp, also Miami Beach Clean Up, and other efforts that are constantly ongoing because they treasure this treasure that we call Biscayne Bay. Also, uh, Luis Aguirre for always being able to, to point out uh, to being able to point out in a proactive manner where it is that we're dropping the ball and what it is that we can do better. But once again, thank you so much, Governor, for, um, for your help, for your work, and um, for walking the talk. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I didn't see Charlie. We have Charlie, from the, Charlie Martinez from the Water Management Board. So thanks for coming. Appreciate it. So we're, we're happy to be able to do this. We look forward to making some more progress with our, uh, with our new legislature. We are going to be doing a special session in, uh, in December. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, tackling uh, homeowners insurance reforms, which, need, which is needed. And we've done some, but we need to do more. Uh, we're going to be doing hurricane relief for the property owners who've had their properties uh, destroyed. Uh, we're going to forgive that, those property taxes. We need the legislature to do that. I've delayed it, but I need them to do it. And we will do whatever we need to do to, to help uh, the Hurricane Ian communities in terms of appropriations or some of the other things. And so I, I think that it will be really, really good. We're also uh, going to be pushing all the priorities that we outlined um, during the campaign. Now, there was more I, I wanted to outline. But I, you know, we had the hurricane, we had a lot of other stuff. But, um, you know, I promised that we wanted to do the 50% reduction in, in tolls for the commuters. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to be working on getting that done as soon as possible uh, because I know that when you have inflation the way it is, uh, that's something that can make a big, big difference for a lot of people. So stay tuned on that, and uh, hopefully we'll have some good news very, very shortly. Okay. Thank you. Yes.